Hello, I'm Bob Ellis, Assistant Director of the Institute for Southern Studies at the University of South Carolina, which is home to the SIMS initiatives. The initiatives are a digital humanities project of the university libraries, funded in part with a generous grant from the Watson Brown Foundation. In celebration of Halloween and to promote our site, we are reading one of SIMS's ghost stories throughout the month of October. The story is called Grayling or Murder Will Out, and it is part of the author's short story collection, The Wigwam and the Cabin. At this point in the story, James Grayling, having arrived in Charleston, has just obtained a warrant to search for the nefarious Scotchman Sandy McNabb aboard a ship docked in the harbor. The aftermath of his experience is the subject of part 14 of William Gilmore Sims's Grayling or Murder Will Out. The measure was accordingly adopted, and it was nearly sunset before the warrant was procured, and the proper officer in readiness, the impatience of a spirit so eager and so devoted as James Grayling under these delays may be imagined. And when in the boat and on his way to the packet where the criminal was to be sought, his blood became so excited that it was with much ado that he could be kept in his seat. His quick, eager action continually disturbed the trim of the boat, and one of his mercantile friends, who had accompanied him with that interest in the affair which curiosity alone inspired, was under constant apprehension lest he would plunge overboard in his impatient desire to shorten the space which lay between. The same impatience enabled the youth, though never on shipboard before, to grasp the rope which had been flung at their approach and mount her sides with cat-like agility. Without waiting to declare himself or his purpose, he ran from one side of the dock to the other, greedily staring to the surprise of officers, passengers, and seamen in the faces of all of them and surveying them with an almost offensive scrutiny. He turned away from the search with disappointment. There was no face like that of the suspected man among them. By this time, his friend the merchant with the sheriff's officer had entered the vessel and were in conference with the captain. Grayling drew nigh in time to hear the latter affirm that there was no man of the name of McNabb, as stated in the warrant, among his passengers or crew. He is, he must be, exclaimed the impetuous youth. The major never lied in his life and couldn't lie after he was dead. McNabb is here, he's a Scotchman. The captain interrupted him. We have, young gentlemen, several Scotchmen on board, and one of them is named McLeod. Let me see him, which is he, demanded the youth. By this time, the passengers and a goodly portion of the crew were collected about the little party. The captain turned his eyes upon the group, and he asked, Where is Mr. McLeod? He is gone below. He's sick, replied one of the passengers. That's he. That must be the man, exclaimed the youth. I'll lay my life. There's no other than McNabb. He's only taken a false name. It was now remembered by one of the passengers and remarked that McLeod had expressed himself as unwell, but a few moments before and had gone below even while the boat was rapidly approaching the vessel. At this statement, the captain led the way into the cabin, closely followed by James Grayling and the rest. Mr. McLeod, he said with a voice somewhat elevated as he approached the berth of that person, you are wanted on deck for a few moments. I'm really too unwell, Captain, replied a feeble voice from behind the, the curtain of the berth. It will be necessary, was the reply of the captain. There is a warrant from the authorities of the town to look after a fugitive from justice. McLeod had already begun a second speech declaring his feebleness when the fearless youth Grayling bounded before the captain and tore away with a single grasp of his hand the curtain which concealed the suspected man from their sight. This has been part 14 of William Gilmore Sims's Grayling or Murder Will Out. I hope you will tune in next time for another section of this ghostly tale. If you'd like to read the full text of this story or any of the many other works we have available, simply visit the Sims Initiative's website at sims.library.sc.edu. Until then, Happy Halloween!